Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? I am your host, the jeweler himself, VVS Blackout, and today I want to talk about influencers. You may know an influencer. You may know Shane Dawson, Destry Smith, Ryan Haywood from Achievement Hunter. These were all pretty iconic influencers and pretty iconic people to watch on YouTube back in the day or most recently. These three right here helped me want to do YouTube. They were funny and I just thought that they were cool people. But as we all know, 2020 and 2021 have absolutely destroyed these people. And now they're completely deplatformed and completely gone and I couldn't be any happier. Now granted, it still sucks because that's part of your childhood that's just been set ablaze and it's destroyed now. There's no coming back from it. But it is a good thing that these people have been exposed and they're now gone. And some of them are trying to make a comeback. Now, one that hit me like a freight train was EDP445, who is probably in a jail cell right now at the time of me recording this, but nonetheless, I'm still going to talk about him. And I know everyone's wanting to talk about him, get in that clout, but I'm going to do more than just talk about EDP, okay? I'm going to do more than just talk about him. I'm going to talk about most of the influencers that are on YouTube in general, so don't leave. Now, when I first saw EDP, it was from a meme. I'm not going to show the meme because I'm not going to give this guy any more screen time than what he deserves, but it was from a meme that we pretty much all know by now. Actually, a couple memes. Nonetheless, most of us know who he is, and I thought he was funny as hell, but I had no idea any of this was boiling up to what led to last night when the video got uploaded. And it is from Poachers. Now, I'm not going to say the first part of Poachers because I don't want this video to get shadow banned. And I feel like this video could do some good to those out there who are struggling letting these influencers go. What's crazy to me is that I was editing a highlight from the stream that I had that day. And my brother sent me a post on the 19th. So about two days ago when I'm recording this. And... I saw EDP and I saw the account that it came from and I knew who the account was and I couldn't believe it. You guys ever hear something or see something so insane that you can't process it or register it there on the spot? It was, it was sort of like that. I even asked him, dude, is this fake? He's like, no, it's not. He's been exposed. But apparently this was the second time he has been exposed. So yeah, without getting further into detail about that, I highly recommend you guys go watch the 50 minute video exposing EDP with the chat logs and just with everything that he says. Because I'm going to bring up a little bit about what he says in the video today. But now I want to talk about this. 2020 and 2021 have exposed some of the most iconic people for being absolute trash bags. And don't get me wrong, it's okay to draw inspiration from an influencer. It's okay to want to do the same things as an influencer. But do not idolize these influencers. Now, when you think of the word idolize, you're putting them on a pedestal that is monumental to you. So that means that if they do wrong, you are going to be affected. And granted, you know, I guess me saying that Shane Dawson, Destry, Ryan, all of these cases, even EDP, that was some sort of idolization. But I think it's more of the fact that I am so sick and tired of seeing the YouTubers or the content creators that I loved watching come out to be just just absolute garbage but what i think has happened that since so many people are screaming out that they that these people need to accept responsibility that they've actually got away with just acknowledging their responsibility and what i mean is this right edp he confessed to everything they asked him did you double message her did you try to engage conversation he said yes did you try to send explicit pictures to a 13 year old he said yes so he was accepting responsibility that way but I think what really set it in stone was when they asked him, do you think you should go to jail for this? And he said, yes. Of course, like he was in denial. He was like, you know, mama didn't raise anybody like this, you know, but whatever. You know, the fact is he still accepted responsibility and I'm not defending the dude. I hope he goes to jail. I hope he serves the most amount of time that can be given for his crimes because he's been caught twice. Hey, sorry for the interruption to the video. I just found out that after I already scheduled the upload for the video, that Chet Goldstein was kind of exposed about some things as well. One of them being that he was not going to upload the video right away unless it got full monetization on YouTube, and then by the end of it, he was begging for light goals and all this other stuff. Plus, there's also a video of him boxing a P-word, which I'm pretty sure you guys know what the P-word means. Because he made a deal with him saying that if he let him do that, the cops wouldn't be called. 
So now his integrity as a poacher and just as a person is kind of jaded a little bit. So apparently, and Chet even says this in his video, that he thought that the person that initially came to him about this was a clout chaser. He used a much more gruesome term. I'm just kind of cleaning it up a bit. But that still doesn't change the fact that EDP did something terrible. But it also doesn't help that the person that confronted him about this has also done terrible things in the past. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to add, so back to the video. But let's look at James Charles' apology. And no, I didn't watch the apology through his channel. Because I wasn't going to give him a view because he was still monetized at the time, I didn't want that. So if I did see the apology, I watched it through people analyzing his body language and even H3H3. Now, he talked about it, he talked about his side of the story, which, okay, fine, cool. But he never accepted the responsibility for it. Instead, he accepted it by using an excuse, which doesn't cut it for me. Like, I don't care what kind of excuse you have. If you don't upright say, yeah, you're right, I did do this, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to fix this. And instead you mask it with, oh, I'm sorry, I'm desperate, I'm lonely. He even went on Logan Paul's podcast and said that his love life is crap. Sorry, I'm making this a little PG since I don't want the video to be gone, sorry. Now the thing is, right, I'm pretty sure there are family and friends that have been with you since day one, that are over the age of 18, that you could talk to, or that you could meet up with. And I know people are gonna scream that, oh, it's because of what's going on right now in the world. Like, they're starting to open up airports. You don't have to stay where you're at right now to go see people. I think we should all know by now, it's not enough to de-platform or completely demonetize some of these people who have been exposed. People who have confessed to heinous crimes haven't served a single second in jail and usually come back in one way or another after days, weeks, months, years. I can't be any more serious than what I'm about to be when I say this. What I believe needs to happen are the people who have clearly broken laws should face consequences more severe than just them losing a source of income or being deplatformed. A lot of these people think that since they've obtained a stage of success that millions try to achieve, that they're untouchable that they're invincible. I can't speak for all these influencers who have been exposed, but they know that most of the people in their communities will defend them at all cost, no matter what's been brought to light, especially those who don't stay updated with current drama regarding them. We have to be the ones to expose them for what they've done and who they truly are. And when I say we, I mean the people outside of those communities that pay attention to these people, the ones that don't have a biased or a jaded opinion about these people. You can believe in them all you want. The EDPs, the Dobricks, the mini lads, etc. You can follow them into the trenches, but all they will do is leave you stranded. And by making this video, some of these influencers I looked up to are being buried with their careers in my mind, to where I hope I never have to remember who they are or what they've done to those around them. Maybe you're someone like that. Maybe you're tired of hearing other content creators say the exact same thing and providing the exact same receipts. Hell, you may feel the same way I do and you wanted another perspective. This video is for you. I hope that this helps you find closure and help you put the rest of these people. I am your host, the jeweler himself, VVS Blackout. Going dark. I will see all of you in the next video or stream. Uh, later!